everybody. Welcome to Ask a Hedge Fund Manager. And for this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about biotech. Due to a lot of the potential vaccine stocks out there, I've been getting asked questions about, Nick, do you, what are your thoughts on biotech stocks or X, Y, or Z biotech stock? Do you trade biotech stocks? How would you go about figuring out how much a biotech stock is worth if they if their drug comes out? Well, just to get started on this, I do not personally trade biotech stocks. I do not have any expertise within the healthcare sector, particularly the science involved in how a, to measure a drug is efficable or what potential it has. And a lot of these things swing on a few key FDA rulings. And the FDA decision comes and the stock will either go up exponentially or crash, depending on whether it passes the test or not. I really have no advantage in analyzing that. But so, so I personally do not trade biotech stocks unless if I was trading a broader index, if I was just bullish on the future of, say, innovation in the drug space or that you'll have more incentive to do that or they'll share or there's some policy changes that will make it more profitable to these new drugs or let them out faster. I mean, there's ways I would trade maybe the biotech sector broadly through an ETF such as IBB or XBI, but I do not trade biotech directly. However, I am going to go and answer the question, how do you analyze biotech stocks? And the way you would do it, if I were to invest in a biotech stock, there's a valuation formula for it. It's a little bit different than a regular valuation formula, which would be like an earnings multiple or a discounted cash flow, because most biotech companies are pre-profit, or in some are even pre-revenue. And a lot of it depends on the portfolio of drugs. So to explain this formula, you have TAM, which is the total addressable market. How many people in the world could actually use this drug and at what levels of dosages? It's something like a vaccine that's pretty straight for the pandemic, it's pretty straightforward. It's everybody in the country once. But for other things, maybe like a rare cancer treatment or some other drug, it's not that straightforward because you don't know how many people in the country are susceptible to that disease. You don't know how many dosages will need to be taken, whether it's a recurring drug or it's a one-time cure. There's a lot of variables there. So that's part of the reason why I don't invest in products. Because the TAM is not always straightforward. The price is what the price of what the drug would be selling for. And then you multiply that by the TAM and you multiply by the net margin, profit margin of how much you would make on each uh, unit sold. And then the probability that the drug will successfully make it through all the approval phases of the FDA or if it's non-US, their local uh, regulator on medical issues. And then you that sum, that not sum, that product of those, of all those numbers multiplied with each other is your gross valuation. Then you have to subtract debt out of the company. And then you have to divide it by the required rate of return divide by the number of years, that's what that N is, the number of years it would take for the drug to be um, sold in the marketplace, at hospitals or stores or wherever, or pharmacies, wherever it's gonna be sold. And then you would, if it's a company with more than one drug, you add up all of these in the portfolio. And then you get your sum of your company and they may have different timelines. And this is how you see some of the big pharmas sometimes trade really cheap multiples, not because their existing drugs aren't profitable, it's because their pipeline of these potential is not that strong maybe. Or if it's a, a drug company that trades at a really high valuation, it's the opposite. Their, their current drugs make good money, but they're pricing at a much higher valuation because there may be a good drug in the pipeline. And this is how, like if I'm a big farmer wanting to acquire a smaller biotech company, this is how I would value that. Because again, they don't really have cash flows currently or earnings yet because 
they're busy researching and developing the product that's going to sell. And given the way our um, patent system works in the United States, once you do get a drug that makes it through it, it's very profitable because you can't compete for 14 years. So that's just my summary on biotech. Uh, I think this is the best valuation formula that I can come up with to analyze it, but due to the difficulty of figuring out what the actual TAM is what, and what the probability of success is in terms of in which I think if you have a more scientific medical background, like the best biotech traders I know personally um, came from a medical or scientific background, so they have a better advantage of understanding what both the TAM is and the probability of success way better than I would. So that's kind of why I don't touch this market. But if you do want to trade it, this is the way you would have to construct your models, I'd recommend. And you fig and you just got to dive deep into the science and figure out what, what the opportunities are. Thank you, everybody, for watching this. If you like this channel, uh, please like this video, subscribe, and send me your future questions at askahedgefundmanager at gmail.com and or comment on this video. Thank you for watching and enjoy your week.